Hello everyone. Welcome back to the lecture series on computer vision. This is lecture 2 part 3. We have been talking about colors. Uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about how colors are stored in digital format and what are the different color spaces available to do that. Let's go ahead. So what is color and do we even really care about color or no? Or do we really care about uh, how human vision uh, responds to colors? What is the connection? Um, vision basically is about mimicking human vision uh, and cameras are designed to mimic human eye, right? So let's look at uh, some of these things. But do we really care about human vision? Uh, we don't necessarily, but only because biological vision shows that it is possible to make important judgments about images. Okay, using colors we can interpret interesting things, interesting aspects of uh, objects like we saw in the previous lecture by studying the reflectance uh, properties, the spectral um, profiles of uh, objects, we can actually recognize and detect the, those objects. There is a very interesting field in the direction called hyper, hyperspectral imaging. And it's a human world, right? So uh, we have designed tools like cameras to capture this frequency response uh, that is being imitated by the human eye and when you look at the how the camera is designed you will realize that it's 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 using the exact um, working of human vision capturing the image storing them in a, a sensor array and digitally processing them um, how color sensing happens in camera therefore that should be the next question right so in cameras, basically, uh, there are different types of cameras out there. There are single chip versus three chip uh, cameras. And every camera ha and, and both of these type of cameras have their uh, pros and cons. One chip camera basically has one sensor area one uh, on one chip. And it's easy uh, to capture the intensity of light, but it's not so refined. It's not dynamic. It's not so uh, highly resolved, but it gives you an advantage of cost um, over quality. And the three chip versus, versus one chip is just uh, how the um, sensor errors are organized in the form of grids. But they, that makes them expensive and cheap based on uh, uh, how sophistication, uh, how sophisticatedly they are arranged. Um, and why there are more green colors or green sensors on the camera errors? And why are there only three colors, right? When we look at the the working or the design of the camera uh, we see that there is one uh, signal processor and there is a sensor array which captures three different colors in this form and when you look at this grid it's called a buyer filter which is the basic uh, camera sensor array which is uh, at the back which sits at the back of the camera it captures the uh, light incident on them and then converts it into a digital format and stores it and how does this work so buyer grid basically has uh, three colors and they estimate um, uh, different colors from the neighboring values. Uh, basically it has 50% of green colors, 25% of uh, blue and 25% uh, of red. And these color sensors that, uh, that are spread across grid, they, are, um, they generate the intensity values by uh, weighing the intensity in, uh, incident on their neighboring um, sensor uh, cells, something like this. So for every uh, incident light, they pass through the sensor array and this is how it is uh, the blue sensor arrays generate the intensity values, similarly green and similarly red. And the combination of all this generates the final image uh, for us. Um, and this is uh, this is a small profile like um, like the spectral profile that we saw for the reflectance of the objects. This is a profile of the sensor arrays of uh, the camera, basically how they respond to a different wavelengths of light. And we, as we as we can see clearly that there are three different for blue, green, and red. Um, red is not blocked over here, so sometimes some uh, sensors uh, are able to capture infrared uh, light also. Uh, if you remember, there was uh, the old cameras or the old mobile phones even did not have a blocker here to avoid or to restrict the infrared 
uh, radiation and, and some of those old phones used were able to capture infrared radiation so what is infrared infrared radiation is something that is emitted by any heating object or uh, very uh, highly intense uh, light emitting object so let's say if you um, look towards a headlight of a car or if you look to a, 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 a glowing LED or even uh, fire you will see this infrared radiation uh, through your camera lens uh, but these are the, I'm talking this about the old uh, cameras which had this kind of um, effect because they did not have any blocker over here but now nowadays uh, most of the cameras have this blocker so you don't see this uh, uh, this effect in the new cameras um, Many camera sensors, um, uh, the lens system uh, uh, includes nowadays uh, in, the, in the form of a blocker, a low pass uh, filter which blocks the um, higher, uh, in, uh, higher wavelength intensity, uh, sorry not higher intensity but higher wavelengths like infrared uh, and therefore uh, it is able to block uh, all these radiations. Um, and how do we represent color basically in a digital format right this is an image that i showed you in the beginning of our discussion for colors um, how does all of these colors in combination are stored in digital format um, so before we go uh, towards that uh, we want to see how they are actually represented and all channels are treated equally in this default color space that we call rgb so rgb uh, stands for red green and blue and we have three different channels equally weighting, weigh, weighing uh, each of these color intensities that is in incident on them and then it captures it into a digital format. Um, when I say the capturing in digital format, you remember we discussed about quantization and sampling. That's how they are doing it. They sample the physical uh, light and then they store using their quantization intensity levels into, uh, into uh, memory banks of your uh, uh, imaging system. Um, there is a drawback uh, for um, RGB channels that they are not perceptual. Why? Because each and every uh, color is equally represented in this. For example, here you see uh, this is an original image. Uh, this is the red, green and blue uh, channels where uh, green, if, if one channel is selected, the other two are basically zero. And uh, all of these channels are equally weighted and they are not intuitive they are not uh, following how human perception really works but this is the standard and de uh, default color space that has been ha have been has been used uh, in the vision community uh, for a long time but depending on your um, depending on your uh, application you can switch the color spaces we are going to discuss different color spaces now um, yeah so when i said that um, the RGB is non-perceptual. What I mean is that when we saw the um, profile of our cones for different color wavelengths, we saw that they are not uh, the same. For violet, for green and for blue, the intensity range or the spectral power uh, profile is uh, very different. And therefore, there is an argument on why to, why, to, why to store it in an RGB format. So we come to, uh, the, uh, we come to the question like what is uh, what should we store from the uh, from the color for for, for color right um, interestingly intensity forms the major chunk of the uh, of the um, color and this is also reflected by the fact that there are almost 120 million rod cells which are sensitive toward intensity of the light and only 5 million uh, cone cells which are uh, sensitive toward the color and this gives you uh, an indication that color is not represented or is not absorbed by so many cells and therefore intensity is more uh, important uh, for human vision and this is very obvious um, why because when you think about evolutionary uh, adaption of our human vision you think that um, for us it was really important to see at dark to avoid uh, being eaten or attacked by predators because a lot of predators in the forests and jungle uh, would hunt at night and in order to escape from them it was important that we have a visual system which is more sensitive in the dark and therefore we have more rods to uh, help us navigate during dark. So here you see that for a constant intensity 
the only color uh, only color channels are shown and you can see clearly that we can't get really good uh, interesting or uh, important information in the color channels and therefore the argument why should we use rgb color space with equal weights for all the color channels so we move on and we see uh, an intuitive color space which is called hsv h stands for hue s stands for saturation and v stands for value v is simply the intensity value that we saw before uh, v represents um, uh, the intensity value of um, the incident light as is this uh, hue is uh, the range of colors from the whole uh, visible spectrum and saturation uh, identifies how much uh, that particular hue is present in that in in incident light and this makes a bit more uh, sense than the rgb color space uh, next uh, there is another color space called ycbcr uh, it is efficient easy to compute uh, and fast to compute and it's good for compression and therefore it's used by television and electronic devices predominantly as i told before depending on your application or the domain that you want to work with or the problem that you are working with you can choose one particular color space um, this color space ycbcr is good for compression the colorimetric difference between a given color in a television picture and a standard color of equal luminance uh, this is what is represented by ycbcr uh, color channel uh, color space you see uh, here that um, CR and CB. So CR uh, stands for um, chroma red and CB stands for chroma blue. Y is just for um, uh, intensity value, simple again. For uh, a zero intensity value, you see how the red and the blue chromes change over, um, change with respect to one another. As you, as you increase the intensity, uh, you see that the change in colors uh, that you see here. Uh, similarly, the, uh, like following the previous example, Y uh, basically represents the intensities, uh, CBCR are uh, basically representing chroma blue and chroma uh, red. Important thing in this case is that uh, for CB color space as well, uh, CB color channel and CR color channel, the sum of the other two values have to be one. In contrary to the uh, RGB channel where we saw that the other two channels has, have to be zero. Uh, this, this is the basic difference uh, between uh, RGB and uh, YCBCR color space. Um, most JPEG images and video samples um, subsample chroma. What does it mean, subsampling chroma? Subsampling chroma means it, it, they do not rely or they do not capture so much information from the chromatic uh, uh, scales of YCBCR. This is a very good example where on the left you see an image which has uh, uh, sorry, let's start begin from uh, let's begin from the right image on the right. There is an original image without any um, Some sampling of the chroma and you see this image size is 968 K and after applying a 2 cross 2 chroma uh, subsampling uh, You see the image on the left and visually or perceptually we don't see any difference at all and this is the reason why um, the chromas chromatic uh, scales or the chromatic channels are not highly represented in the um, images and therefore we are able to compress the um, image in a much better manner and uh, store it in our devices uh, last but not the least uh, lab is a perceptually uniform color space um, it's a simple sphere with l a and b uh, the three different uh, axes uh, of a 3d uh, sphere L basically as before represents um, the uh, intensity value and A and B the different channels have different uh, combinations of L and B values which um, make them uh, perceptually uniform. Uh, this is the last color space that I'm discussing. Uh, there are more color spaces out there depending on the um, problem domain that you are working on. Um, uh, you, you, have, you can choose one over the other. Um, and in this lecture, we saw how, uh, in this second lecture, we saw how images are formed uh, and stored, how physical signals are converted into uh, images by capturing uh, through sampling and quantization and how they are represented in the form of colors, how colors idea is inspired by bi biological vision and how our biological vision is limited to only visible spectrum. There are other animals out there who have a larger spectrum of uh, 
sensitivity to different lights in uh, different uh, wavelengths from the electromagnetic spectrum and also there are different cameras which can uh, capture this different uh, spectrum uh, wavelengths and therefore the field of astronomy astrophysics physics who are uh, people who are working in um, in uh, visible uh, or in electromagnetic in le electromagnetic spectrum outside of this visible spectrum and there is a huge field out there uh, who are working with this and depending on what you are looking for or what you are working again I repeat myself uh, you can use one color space over the other every has its advantage and its um, in its drawback but we saw that um, a YCBCR is the most perceptive uh, color spaces which represents the uh, real human vision uh, so for if you're working with something that is uh, that mimics human visual system YCBCR is the color space that you, you can choose um, thank you very much uh, next week we will start studying about um, image frequencies filters basics um, until then goodbye have a nice day